What's up guys? So today I'm going to be reporting on an attack on the I2P network. So what is this attack? Well, Not Bob has done a great blog post and an overview as well as a timeline of the attack. Apparently, as titled, it's an attack of the clones. So what this is, I2P network, it's a peer-to-peer -peer network that also protects you in a similar fashion to the way Tor protects you. Now, one of the differences there is it is a peer-to-peer -peer network where Tor has routers that are static that are uh, entry nodes, bridges, middle relay, exit node, things along that nature in Tor. Now on the other hand, on the I2P network, you are a user and you're also a router. What happened here? Uh, Not Bob's blog post details everything and also has put together some graphs as well to compare things and how things are working. So with I2P, you're connecting. You don't have immediate access to the network. So when you connect to the I2P network, what you're going to want to do is give it a few minutes to find peers, to build the tunnels. With the I2P network, uh, we have to give it a few minutes. And if you have trouble, uh, I do suggest opening Universal Plug and Play on the router that you are connecting to the internet on. Uh, so, for instance, you'll see this green traffic light if everything is good. And you can still use it even if it says firewalled. But if you want to get rid of the firewalled, opening Universal Plug and Play is one option there. It also helps the network. What we can see is I'm actually running an old router. Oh, well, one thing, anytime there's an attack, one of the first things you're going to want to do is make sure you have the latest router update. So take a look over here. We're in I2P Plus, and we can take a look. I have it on Notify only, but I think I'm going to go ahead and set it to Download, Verify, and Restart. So it checks every 36 hours. You can change that to whatever you want. If you want it to automatically update, which I do recommend, go ahead and do Download download, verify, and restart. You can also check for updates here with this button over here. And let's take a look at the attack a little further. So if we go into Not Bob's post, we can see the problem was first noticed on the 19th. And what happened was developers noticed a large number of I2P routers appearing in China. So apparently it looks like a bunch of China-based I2P users and routers. So one IP address may be creating several other routers, in this case practically 98 in this instance. So we're seeing a lot of different activity that was abnormal because who runs hundreds of routers at a time? Not many people and there's no real legitimate use for that, um, but it looks like the network was still working as expected that day. The 21st is when things started to really take effect. There were clones that were coming at over 100 new I2P router clones per hour. So if I run this single I2P router setup, if I were to run 100 new ones every hour, that would seriously become a problem to the network, especially when they were malicious. So someone may take the source code since it's open source and they may make some modifications to that in order to confuse the network to make it more difficult for the network to operate smoothly and that seems to be the point in this particular denial of service attack. It's a distributed denial of service attack which means it's not a single entity, it is several different entities all attacking at the same time in order to overload a network. And original actually proposed a solution in January for this issue. And I actually pulled that up as well. So we have this 165 SSU2 fix here. We can see it's broken down that the attacker creates a bunch of new fake router identities. So these routers don't actually exist in this threat model they're looking at for this proposal. And it shows that the address port and the I keys from Bob's router then floods the network. And when you're trying to connect to a router, Alice can connect to this address, but we can't be sure of what can be done with real Bob's router identity. So there was this proposal to mitigate against a possible future distributed denial of service attack. 
Now, going back to Not Bob's post on this attack, we can see uh, that the massive amount of clone router identities coming up over a hundred new ones per hour, and that. That proposal I just covered in brief was to mitigate against this issue. Now, if we read further into it, we can see that one IP address had over a thousand routers associated with it. So I'm sure you can see how this can become a major problem. And the 22nd, the network still wasn't doing well. Now, in good news, I2PD has helped to mitigate this issue, but the only downside on that is you're going to need to download and compile the I2PD source to apply this fix to your particular I2P router. Now, even easier, much easier in fact, is just running the latest I2P Plus router. And that is a sin that I have uh, failed to update this one, but I will be doing so. Um, and, you know, you can see that the update was 13 days ago, just hadn't gotten around to it. And now we can take a look to and see inside the Sybil analysis. So if you have the I2P Plus router set up at the moment, which is the one that's recommended, uh, you can go in and click on this and you'll find Sybil analysis right here. Now when you go that, you can look through, you can run a new analysis, and what that does is it checks for things that are out of place. So if a router is misbehaving, if it is not doing everything above board, it may get a temporary ban. And I th I actually talked to someone I know who said their IP address got a temporary ban on the I2P network, and they do run some servers and services. So they had mentioned this to me a couple weeks ago, and I think it was just one of those automated things that came from the Sybil analysis. You know, once in a while, the wrong router may get banned, especially when the clones are attempting to take on the identity of other routers. So make sure you do update to I2P Plus latest version, which I will be doing after this video. Um, but we can take a look at the current bands as well by clicking on review current bands and we can see the router uh, bands that are in session for um, my I2P setup at the moment. We can see the reason for those bands as well, which is really great. You know, this is a great setup for someone who wants to be part of the network and also maybe has some concerns and wants to know what's being done. Well, you have that transparency. If you open the Sybil analysis, you can actually see which routers are banned and why they got banned to begin with. So you can see that they had an older version on these temporary bands. So if they update, and everything they won't have to worry about that band so this is only a 202 minute band um, then we also have some permanent bands so if the hash is invalid that means it's not what it should be so anytime you see a hash you know a cryptographic hash run against something it's going to match up to an exact identity of that hash and if it doesn't match that means there's a problem just like when you download a linux operating system you want your checksum hashes to match now if they don't match that means somebody's fooling around something is not right and so this is a really great move on creating the sybil analysis i honestly don't know how long the sybil analysis has been at play on the itp network since you know i recently relatively recently last couple years uh got more into i2p um, but some of that historical context isn't something I'm sure of, but, uh, you know, it is great to see that there is action being taken. And so if you are having any problems connecting to I2P, you have any issues and you're being affected in some way by this, you can go ahead and grab I2P plus and take a look at it and it will actually connect more than something like regular I2P or I2PD. As you can see, Not Bob actually collected some data to help out the network and to help bring awareness on this attack. You can see how the tunnel success 
is going between different versions. So you have I2PD here in the purple, and then you can see it is greater than 50% up here for I2P+. Plus. So that means there are less failures to build tunnels if you're running I2P+, Plus, which is great. And if you do have I2PD, as mentioned, you can actually get the fix by compiling in the fix on the latest I2PD source code. And as mentioned, I2P Plus is handling the attacks better than any other option. And, you know, I've had nothing but great experiences with I2P Plus, so some great work has been done putting that together. It's also a really nice aesthetic look to it, in my opinion, and that is just my opinion. But not only that, you also have all these great different sites of interest that are right on the front page. So if you have curiosity about I2P, definitely take a look at I2P Plus. Always recommend that as the first stop for trying out the I2P network because you're going to have all these known working sites right on the front page. You know, of course, there's been thousands of different I2P sites over the years and not every site is going to be working. So you're going to want to check out this list and there's a lot of great sites. You know, I read a lot of Schneier on security. So as a great blog you can read on I2P. Also, if you were a fan of WikiLeaks, if you loved reading that kind of insight, the inside details of the ongoings in the intelligence world and the mass surveillance world. Well, Distributed Denial of Secrets is another great option. You can check out right on the I2P uh, browser setup. And if you're having trouble setting up an I2P browser setup, take a look at the I2P-desktop thing I set up. And it is over on the Gidea Onion. And that can help automate the creation of an I2P custom profile and an automated shortcut right on your desktop. Best thing you can do is use I2P, download I2P, run a router. You don't even have to browse if you're not into any sites on it, but you can make a big difference, help with the tunnel creation, help other users who are using I2P uh, to do positive things Also, you may want to tweak some of your settings if you're interested at a more aggressively banning these possible bad routers. So if you have the I2P Plus setup or the I2P setup Java version, you can reduce the Sybil scan to hourly and then change the minimum defaults to something lower, meaning that if there is a cutoff for some type of recognition of malicious router activity, you can actually make it more sensitive to that, much like you might make a radio more sensitive to a signal by turning up your low noise amplifier. So in that way, you can actually tweak things on this. You can, of course, first update your I2P router and then go ahead after that, go into your civil analysis going in to change those settings. If you want to help get rid of some of these bad routers even more quickly, go into your periodic analysis and go down here and you can change that threshold as not Bob suggests right here uh, to actually do that. And you can reduce the scan to hourly, then change the minimum defaults to catch something lower. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I haven't actually played with this, so let's do it together. So we can run the task every 60 minutes. Let's do that. And we can also leave it on delete after 48 hours, automatic blocking, okay. Now the threshold here, we, do we want it to be more sensitive? Well, if we want it to be more sensitive, well, then we may lower this to maybe 30. So there's a point system in place. So if a router is acting um, maliciously, it's going to violate some of these points in the point system that they have set up here in the I2P router. So uh, you can see the ways things are being banned and you can see and you can lower that to actually make it more sensitive so it was at 35 by default I lowered it down to 30 and why not I mean there is an active attack on the network I think it could be a great option there and if you want to get even more serious you could even go here and include non flood fill as well for the Sybils um, and then once you're done once you've set it 
to what you want. Do you want it to check for malicious routers every 60 minutes? Do you want it to uh, have a higher threshold? Say um, you are more trusting of malicious routers. Just kidding. Uh, just set it to whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm setting it at 30. I'm going to try that. We'll see what happens when I set it to 30. I'll hit save and there we go. Automatically has lowered that threshold, lowered the number of points that it takes to ban a router and has made myself feel just a little safer in the process of doing so. So definitely check out Not Bob's blog. Got a great blog here. Anytime you want to learn the ongoings of the I2P network, Not Bob does regular posts specifically on the I2P network, does a lot of great reviews of I2P sites. So if you just want to discover new things on the I2P network, check out Not Bob's blog. Highly recommend it. And if you want to support Not Bob's not Bob's work, <laughs> you'll go over to the donate button. So share this video so that people can learn about the possibilities of the I2P network, which really you have unlimited possibilities. When you have privacy, when you have security, when you have the potential for anonymity, the possibilities really are endless and you can build applications specific to it. You can take a look at the anonymous torrent client, which I covered. Take a look at my previous video on that. So if you're interested in torrents, go ahead and check that out. Wanted to report on this attack because it is a rather serious attack and it does appear that the IP addresses of these routers are showing up in China. What does that mean? That doesn't really mean a lot. It could be China, but it very well and more likely, in my opinion, is another country or another bad actor that's working on this because usually when you have attacks on these kinds of networks, when you have mass surveillance, when you have um, those types of targeted attacks, you're always going to see misdirection and get your attention looking somewhere else. So if it looks like China, it's probably not China, but it might be. It could be China. We really don't know. That's what I got today, guys. Make sure to share the video and help spread the word on I2P. I support all networks that are helping to protect our anonymity, privacy, but I really enjoy using I2P. It's one of my favorites and it has a lot of great features that you can learn more about it within it. So there's a lot of great transparency that also breaks it down in a way that can be understood by the average user. You can see the basics of why they're being banned. That's what I got today, guys. Make sure to share, like the video, check out Not Bob's blog, and I'll be back later with more on I2P, how to protect your security and privacy.